Somebody please tell me why I am here at 3.20 in the morning in full goddamn glam to make a video for you guys. At this very moment in time, we are doing a weird kind of video because my fiance is upstairs sleeping, so I gotta keep my voice down so that he can get his sleep, but I can provide you the tea. So think of this kind of like a petty page, ASMR, spilling of the tea so go and get your chamomile tea because in britain we drink it we do not spill it as we discuss rupaul's transphobic remarks y'all ready let go more money i want your money i want more money i want your money more money i want your money i want more money i want your money once upon a time not long ago i was a hoe and I'm admitting it, I won't take it back Cause I did this shit, I was a hoe And I'm admitting it, I won't take it back Cause I did this shit, I was a hoe More money, I want your money I want more money, I want your money More money, I want your money I want more money Because we're from Britain, okay? We don't spill tea, we drink it Bitch! Yes, it's your girl, Penny Page, back at it again with yet another video for you hoes. Today we're going to be talking about a completely different person on my channel. I don't believe I've ever talked about Mama Roo on my channel. It breaks my heart to have to tell you guys this story. However, this is a tea and I feel like pretty much everybody should know about this. So if you don't know who Mama Roo is, unfortunately there are so many people and drag queens involved that I am not going to be doing a 60 second rundown because if I do a 60 second rundown, I'm gonna have to do a 60 second rundown on all the rest of these bitches. So basically, four days ago, an interview was published with RuPaul by The Guardian. The interview is one long ass interview. However, RuPaul did address one of the biggest questions throughout Drag Race, which is, are we going to be seeing any different kinds of drag? The drag community has been developing so much over the past couple of years that literally now there are so many different kinds of drag. Yes, bitch, I know. I've got a wonky eyelash on my left side. I don't need y'all to drag me in the comments. I know that that's what y'all are going to do anyways. Listen, it's like half past three in the morning and I'm just like so tired. So there is going to be a hell of a lot of voiceovers. So I hope that you guys are ready for the ride today because it is going to be one that is bumpy. Jordan Bay is brutally honest. We have bio queens, we have drag kings, we have trans drag artists, we have ultra femme drag artists. The drag community has grown and has spanned as wide and as vast as the eye can see. So there are various different kinds of drag that we're just not seeing on Drag Race. So the question was posed to RuPaul on whether we would be seeing different kinds of drag on Drag Race in the near future that was not necessarily specific to a male impersonating a female. And what he said has actually left a lot of his fans and a lot of people who stand RuPaul's Drag Race as a whole absolutely stunned. Me being one of those people, I am severely let down. So when speaking about the trans community in relation to RuPaul's Drag Race, he said, well, I don't like to call drag wearing women's clothes. If you look around this room and he gestures around the hotel lobby, she's wearing a shirt with jeans. That one's wearing a jeans with a shirt, right? So women don't really dress like us. We are wearing clothes that are hyper feminine that represent our culture's synthetic idea of femininity. In the subculture of drag, you do occasionally find what are known as bio queens biological women who mimic the exaggerated femininity of drag would rupaul allow a biological woman to compete in his show he hesitates drag loses its sense of danger and its sense of irony once it's not men doing it it's social statement and it's a big fuck you to the male dominated culture so if men do it it's really punk rock because it's a real rejection of masculinity so how can a transgender woman be a drag queen hmm it's an interesting area peppermint didn't get breast implants until she left our show she was identifying as a woman but she hadn't really transitioned would he accept a contestant who has he hesitates again probably not you can identify as a woman and say that you're transitioning but it changes once you start changing your body it takes on a whole different thing you can identify as a woman and say you're transitioning but it changes once you start changing your body it takes on a whole different thing it changes the whole concept of what we're doing 
we've had some girls who've had some injections in the face and maybe a little in the button here and there but they haven't transitioned peppermint is a drag queen from the new york drag queen scene she is openly recognized as a legend within the drag community for her appearances within the ballroom scene when she made her appearance on drag race it was actually quite significant and the reason that it was significant was purely because she let producers know from the jump that she was a transgendered woman some other drag queens who have come out as transgender have done that outside of RuPaul's Drag Race or the other option was and I think it was with Monica Beverly Hills where she came out to the group but when she was in casting it wasn't openly known that she was a transgendered female. Monica tell me what's on your mind. <laughs> it's true what you're saying there is a lot going through my head I feel I'm not here. I'm not just a drag queen I'm a transgendered woman. So the reaction on social media to RuPaul's words was absolutely crazy. Take a look. Hey girls, it's Rich Lux, and I'm gonna expose you, girl. So much drama. I got my receipts. Here are all my receipts, girl. My expired receipts. My pussy's burning. Drama. I'm gonna expose you. Yeah. The hating on me because I got all the teeth. Hating on me because I got all the teeth. Hating on me because I called you a she girl. So much drama. I'm gonna expose you. I'm so gonna expose you right now. You're being exposed, and you don't even know you're being exposed. I'm exposed, you girl, because there's so much drama. Drama on Facebook, drama on Twitter, drama on Instagram, drama on Twitter. Check my YouTube comment section. It's so much drama, girl. So much drama going on right now. I'm going to expose you. I'm so going to expose you. There's drama at school, drama at work, drama while I'm waiting in line to pick my damn kid from school. So much drama, girl. I'm at the nail salon right now. Yeah, I want the red color. Thank you so much. So much drama. Gotta go home and wash dishes. So much drama, girl. Gotta shoot this video for you too. So much fucking drama going on right now, girl. So much drama. I'ma expose you. There's so much drama going on right now. I'ma expose you, girl. I'm gonna take a photo of you and I'ma Photoshop it. I'm gonna put exposed. Cause you're being so exposed, girl. Cause there's so much drama, 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 girl. So much drama, 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 girl. Your makeup palette never came out. I want my money back. I donated to your GoFundMe. I never got anything, girl. And your makeup smells like pee. I'm exposed here. Drama in the air, drama in the sky, drama in the water, girl. When you drink it and you breathe it, so much drama. Inhale it, girl. So much drama, 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 girl. There's so much drama going on right now. I'm gonna expose you. I'm so gonna expose you right now. Drama, 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 now the most vocal person on the whole entire situation actually happened to be William Belly. William Belly. Yes, you've got this to deal with too, bitch. I'm gonna be calling him William Belly. I know his name is Willem. I was tired. Okay. Jordan Byers, brutally honest, Jordan Byers. He is a RuPaul's Drag Race contestant turned YouTuber, turned Patreoner, turned musician turned model literally he has done everything under the sun but he was actually famously eliminated from the rupaul's drag race for breaking rules it has come to my attention that you have broken the rules rules that are in place to protect the fairness of this competition your actions have consequences and i'm afraid you leave me no choice Willem, I have to ask you to leave the competition immediately. Now, sachet away. And it seems to me that ever since that, RuPaul has never really supported William Belly's career in the same way that he supported the rest of the RuPaul Drag Race alum. I've got to respect Willem because he is literally like a self-made man. Everything he does, he does for himself. His beatdown episodes have become famous on YouTube and everybody tunes in. Oh, this one's going to be so fun. I'm going to get comfortable. Oh, a little more Mrs. Brady than Marsha Brady, but I don't give a fuck. 
So basically he starts off by letting everybody know that he's going to be unblocking RuPaul in order to watch all this shadiness go down, which is totally petty and I stand it. Yes, Willem. Then he moved the conversation over to Instagram where he threw yet some more shade by posting memes and videos. Then he came back to Twitter and he said, we all know in our drag community that if casting knew you were trans, you would be disqualified. Charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent were not the only things that they screamed for. I could not find a gif of me saying bullshit at the reunion, so I'll just use this. Now, I specifically remember a couple of years ago when Willem was a part of the Triple A Girls, which consisted of Courtney Act and Alaska Thunderfuck, that in this mic interview, he said something that everybody was pointing the finger at as being RuPaul. He then later confirmed this on his Twitter like, yeah, I said it, that's who I was talking about, mm-hmm. Kindness is free, I think, and sometimes um, there's this one drag queen that just is not nice to names. people. <laughs> sure, I can if you'd like, but I don't think, think it would be very useful. It's, it's tragic how someone at the top of their game who has been so blessed wouldn't won't even smile at someone or stop to talk to you and say hi. You know, or there's lots of things that this person does that I don't appreciate and a lot of other people don't, but I'm the only one with nothing to lose, so I say it. Another person who has been quite vocal on the situation is actually Peppermint. Now, Peppermint is the transgendered woman who came out as openly transgender on the RuPaul's Drag Race. And in an interview with Billboard magazine, she said, Trans women and women have always been directly and indirectly contributing to the art form of drag. Like voting, driving, working, and eventually the office of the President of the United States, drag evolves. My hope is that together that we can uplift all forms of drag, both on TV and in the real world. Gay men do not own the idea of gender performance. RuPaul so brilliantly said, drag is a big F you to the male dominated culture. And I believe people of all gender expressions and bodies can contribute to challenging that culture. This is a personal issue for many people, including myself. Unfortunately, it won't be the first or last time we will hear that a woman cannot do something that a man can. I'm out to change that. But Peppermint wasn't the only Drag Race alum who had something to say on the situation. Carmen Carrera and Gia Gunn had something to say too. Now, just as a side note, some years ago, I do remember that Carmen Carrera kicked up a massive fuss just after she had transitioned, that she didn't find it acceptable that RuPaul was using the word she on his program. Now, anybody who watches RuPaul's Drag Race, I'm imagining that a lot of you guys do, because I see you comment all the time in my posts how much you love my Drag Race meme. Dad about to die. So are you probably <laughs> Okay bitch, I'm gonna read this one more time. <laughs> the sad thing is I think this about myself. So you've got nothing on me, bitch. Here we go. Chad about to die. So Rue probably wanted him to be happy. <laughs> However, anybody who avidly watches RuPaul's Drag Race will remember a time when announcing the challenges, the RuPaul would say, Ooh, girl, you got she -mail. Ooh, girl, you got she -mail. However, I do believe that it ended up getting changed. I think it was in season six, which I do believe is Bianca Del Rio's year, to she already done had hers. Ooh, girl. I don't know how true this is, and I have heard a lot through the grapevine as well, that there was an episode that aired on TV where one of the mini challenges was actually called She Male or Female, and basically the drag queens had to decide who was a real biological female and who was a she male, which, to be honest, is absolutely disrespectful to the trans community. But by Carmen Carrera opening her mouth alongside a lot of other people who showed their dismay to that particular episode, Episode, they were able to incite change throughout the entire RuPaul's Drag Race episodes from that day forward. So about two days ago, Carmen Carrera hopped onto her Instagram Live and started talking to her fans about the entire situation and how many news publications had reached out to her. Turns out that Carmen Carrera did not want the drama, however she did want to discuss it with her audience because she felt like it was an important topic to discuss. Later on in that stream, Gia Gunn actually showed up and she guested alongside Gia Gunn and they discussed the entire situation and how they felt as two transgendered women. At least for me personally, like I found myself through drag 
Drag Race was a Same. big part of my journey and me too. My discovering of my gender identity. So it just kind of hurts and makes me a little sad to hear such an iconic person that stands for unity and acceptance and has created this culture of such acceptance talk like mm -hmm. that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's surprising and it does hurt. Like, I'm not going to lie, but, you know, I have my history with RuPaul. You do. And with Drag Race. And, you know, I've only ever wanted to be a positive voice for my community and for those who, who don't have a voice. Because when I came up through the drag circuit, I was all, I was around all trans women that, you know, basically just were sex workers and just made just enough money to get their costume made to feel fabulous Thanks. on stage. That doesn't change us as people. That doesn't change us as it artists. It doesn't change you as a performer. Like, if you're a good performer, a performer, yeah, like hormones and surgery, it's, it's yeah, about the, your look changes. But drag is not just about looks. Right. And I feel like that's something that Drag Race has always instilled in people is that it's not about the aesthetic. It's about your performance. It's about your creativity. It's about what you bring to the table as a whole. And I feel like and whether or not you're transgender... Yeah, like, whether or not you're transgender doesn't matter. Like, people have to take that out. Trans women have been involved in drag for so long. And, like, what about girls like me that we wouldn't be, like, I wouldn't be where I am in such a happy state, finding my authentic truth and living my life as a woman if it weren't for drag and having the ability to express myself in a feminine manner, you know, without having to take hormones and actually like chemically transition because that decision is so big and i feel like drag was kind of a nice gateway to kind of play with all that and discover like okay is this really just for the shows and the lights or is this really my reality and so mm -hmm. now as a still current drag performer you know like i pay my bills on doing drag so like it does make me feel a little bit like you don't belong disowned, but just like i yeah. don't belong or like we're not doors for other trans performers that are just as good queens as any other you know gay man or any person that does drag and i think yeah it's, I, mm -hmm. I agree i think it's unfortunate but at the same time i think it also takes you know, girls like me and you to stand up for our community and to continue to create awareness and just educate people on what it means to be transgender and what it means to be a drag queen and what it means to mm -hmm. partake in this culture because I don't think a lot of people really fully understand, even starting with our own community. What does the transition have to do with the quality of performance? None. It None. doesn't. It doesn't. You're, if you're well, a good performer or a bad performer, regardless if you get butt injections or not get butt injections or take estrogen or take t testosterone blockers, which is per very personal, mm -hmm. I think. It's, not, it's no one's business. Like, if I go to, to work at a drag show, you're not asking about my genitalia. You're Correct. not asking about my medication. You're asking about, hey, girl, can I borrow that wig glue? Can I, can I, you, can I use your duct tape real quick or whatever? You know, you're not asking Correct. those personal questions. So. Why is it that RuPaul can make money off the trans idea with her tranny songs and her trans looking aesthetic, but then b block trans women from competing who are really worthy of the opportunity? I feel like is not is not right either. Like, how are you going to copy our swag and then say we're not allowed? I will never talk bad about somebody who gave me such a great opportunity and saw something in me at one time i just wish that she could see the same thing in me now as the woman as she did as a boy who dressed up in wigs i don't understand why people would be like no but don't bite the hand that feeds you and da 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 when it's like okay so when the hand is an abusive hand i can't walk away with my dignity correct and call things out i'm not allowed to because this person what threw me a fucking bone at one point in my life i don't i feel like it's so unfair look are they even paying attention at the fucking drag con don't they see the people that are coming through their doors don't they see that it's like everyone it's a spectrum of people that come in you have kids that are that do drag you know what i'm saying you have everyone that does drag so 
Why would you and maybe it's that? not so much see and this is where I still need to like think about it cuz I think she's specifically talking about being a contestant on the show. I don't think it means that she hates trans people. I don't think it means that she's transphobic. I don't think it means that the show doesn't like trans performers. I just think she's trying to put her foot down in terms of the criteria that the show requires in order to be a contestant. Nothing more, nothing less. I guarantee that we'll continue to do as much as we can for We're going to continue to everyone. be astonishing, amazing performers. I'm not giving up as but now more than ever. I am not giving up my showgirl, my my whole bit. Like, I won't. I mean, that was good, right? That was a great, positive, uplifting conversation that they had with each other. Not only supporting each other as women, but also listening and understanding both sides of the coin. And I think it was really good that Gia Gunn also put into the mix that she doesn't think that RuPaul was transphobic, as in he hates trans people, or he has an issue with people who are transgendered. Just maybe that for the criteria of his show that that's not what he wants which is completely his prerogative which personally speaking I can get on board with too however it seemed to me that maybe Gia Gunn got scared or worried in some kind of way and decided to make like this Hillary Clinton ass public TV looking ass counselor is trying to tell you to vote the Labour Party looking ass video but she discusses the situation in something that clearly seemed to me very scripted and discussed the whole situation from a trans perspective but also how we should react to the situation which was in a very scripted way that I can't I can't get out of my head that it was scripted it felt scripted to me in regards to the article I feel we must react with calmness and not blow things out of proportion. We must approach the situation from a place of wanting to understand, not our initial hurt or anger. For me personally, it's always a little hard to decipher the true meaning of things when in text versus hearing it from the individual's mouth. With that being said, I don't think RuPaul is saying that trans queens and bio queens are any less valid as drag artists. I think he is simply stating the criteria in which is required to be a contestant on his show, which is apparently someone who looks male, but doesn't necessarily identify as one. Now, some may be confused when RuPaul states, Peppermint didn't get breast implants until after she left our show. She was identifying as a woman, but she hadn't really transitioned. RuPaul furthers his point by saying, you can identify as a woman and say you're transitioning, but it changes once you start changing your body. It takes on a different thing. It changes the whole concept of what we're doing. Now, what I think RuPaul means here is that a contestant's body modifications can only go so far before that contestant no longer qualifies to be on Drag Race. However, Lip, hip, and butt modifications seem to be okay as we've seen this on previous contestants in the past. If you ask me personally, it boils down to when the individual has breast augmentation surgery or there's visible breast development due to hormone replacement therapy that the show no longer recognizes you as a valid participant on their specific competition. I honestly just think that RuPaul wants to keep the show representing the traditional definition of drag. So one, there's a clear sense of transformation. And two, the danger and irony that drag queens represent stays relevant because as she states, at its core, it's a social statement and a big F you to male dominated culture. Okay, so we've gone full circle. I've showed you pretty much as much receipts as I can share on this situation. But it all comes round to, what is my opinion? I think it's important to note that sexuality and gender are two completely different things. However, in this situation, this is neither here nor there as it has absolutely nothing to do with the art form of drag. Drag as an art form has grown so immensely over the past couple of years and we are seeing various different kinds of drag that didn't exist before. I mean, remember at one point when Sharon Needles with her spooky 
spooky, creepy drag vibe was so new and so different and so edgy. And we're seeing now so many drag queens who are not only taken after or drawing inspiration from Sharon Needles, but also drag queens are actually pushing these boundaries and taking it even further. We are now seeing an influx of what people are calling bio queens, which are women who are biologically female, who are doing the art form of drag. However, as it's not impersonating a woman, it's just hyper feminization. Personally speaking, I don't like the term bio queen. It kind of makes me feel like women are only their vaginas. And being a drag queen or doing the art of drag is an art form in itself. It has absolutely nothing to do with somebody's sex or gender or sexuality or what they identify as. But besides bio queens slash hyper feminine queens, we also have the awesomeness which is drag kings. Which is exactly the same as being a drag queen except you are now exploring hyper masculinity. But it doesn't end there, there are the cosplay queens. The dark queens, the ball scene queens, the vogue queens, club kid queens, the theatrical queens, the pageant queens, the SFX queens, and the list goes on and on and on. There are so many intersectional areas of drag, but the one thing that brings the entire community together is the love of transforming themselves into something or someone or a being that is completely different to themselves. And that is what drag is all about. Not about your sexuality, not about your gender, not about what is between your legs. It is about your creative mind and how you empower others with what you do to empower yourself. For me, as a long-term stan of RuPaul's Drag Race, this is extremely disappointing. I will never ever forget the moment that I started seeing drag queens on TV. And I remember in the UK, it was actually the second series of RuPaul's Drag Race that was showing on E4 at 2 a.m. in the morning. I used to sneak downstairs into the living room and turn on the TV to watch one entire hour of RuPaul's Drag Race, this new TV show that I thought that I had discovered. Seeing people transform themselves into somebody different and put on makeup and feel amazing was literally what made me fall in love with transforming myself. From the wigs to the eyelashes to the various different looks I have had over the years. Drag has always been and will continue to be a massive part of my life even if I don't partake in it myself. Because to me drag will always be transforming yourself to feel good to make others feel even better. I honestly personally think that age comes into play because personally speaking, I've always found speaking about gender and sexuality and them being two completely different things to anybody literally above the age of 40 has been extremely difficult because it's very hard for some people to separate the two. And in a world where RuPaul grew up where being non-binary was never a thing, his identity probably means a lot more to him than it's ever meant to any of us growing up. However, with the amount of transgendered drag queens that have come out of RuPaul's Drag Race, as well as the amount of non-binary drag queens that have come through, through RuPaul's Drag Race, I feel like he has an obligation to make himself more teachable, as Mr. Mon says, and learn and understand other paths and other ways of being your best and understanding other people's walks of life and why drag is not intersectional to men impersonating a woman. In a few years time we'll be looking at that form of drag as old school drag. Since some of the things he said on social media he has apologised. Is it enough for me? I'm not sure. For me, I feel like there needs to be a little bit more proof in the pudding. I would like to see different forms of drag. I would like to see bio queens slash hyper feminine queens. I would love to see various different art forms of drag besides the kind that we're constantly seeing now. The reason why people like Sharon Needles and Asha was so prevalent within the drag race alum is purely because they represented something unique and different to the status quo that is drag and honestly with Ben De La Creme leaving in the way that he does knowing that Ben De La Creme has a transgendered partner which I do think is De La Christ 
It makes me think whether there was something said that Ben couldn't stand by. Because remember, this was the easiest decision he has made in his time being at Drag Race. Just something to think about. This is the easiest choice that I have had to make this entire season. I'm going home. What? What did you just say? But anyway, that is about it. I hope you're okay with like this ASMR thing. But also, I have been thinking about going to DragCon LA. So I also wanted to ask you guys if any of you guys are going to be going, are you going to be there? Let me know in the comment section down below because honestly, maybe just like seeing a couple of friendly faces would honestly make me feel better about handing over the stone cold hard cash that I'm going to have to hand over should I decide to go to DragCon this year. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like it, if you don't, I don't give a shit anyway. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification with the bell so that you guys get a notification every single time the pay page posts new content personally speaking i always thought the drag race was about charisma uniqueness nerve and talent not charisma uniqueness nerve and titties or tackle but that is just my humble opinion and don't take my opinion for it because i'm really really quiet but just petty also, Jordan Byers, brutally honest, don't think I forgot about you, bitch. Brutally, mother effing honest, bitch. Too much money in the bank. I ain't trying to play no games. I'm not here to go on sack. I be on my hustle all day, little bitch.